This is the Sandorini Earthquake Update for the 19th of February 2025, the missing GNSS station. So for today's update, which has been done at 9.53 GMT, we can say that over the past 24 hours, earthquake activity is down markedly versus the previous 24 hours. Let's look at the intensity data and see how it compares to the movement of the islands using today's data. This video is from an article on strikeengine.com. This is linked to in the video description and in that article, there's a link there where you can go and see sources for live earthquake data coming from the uh, southern Aegean area. So first of all, the intensity. Looking at the energy released and the seismographs for the past 24 hours, First of all, the cumulative energy release, always a nice one to look at this. Versus the previous 24 hours, the cumulative energy released by earthquakes in Greece as a whole is down by around 95%. On the 18th of February, the cumulative energy released in the previous 24 hours to that was around 2000 megawatt hours. And as of this update this morning, for the 19th, the previous 24 hours has shown uh, an energy release of only 90 megawatt hours. Obviously a big difference and uh, this looks like it's rejoining the trend which has been on a downward trajectory for the last seven days. So this is the graph. The link is on that picture there if you want to go and see it for yourself. It's uh, for Greece as a whole, it's not localized to the South Aegean, so maybe we're losing something, losing some resolution. But I think it's a good indication of what is going on anyway. And we can see this is around the 12th of February and the, uh, the trend is for a downward, downward trend in the energy release from the earthquake. So this was yesterday, 2 gigawatt hours in that previous 24 hours and as of this morning the last 24 hours is down to about i don't know what's that 90 megawatt hours so the trend is downwards obviously this could be a blip or this could be a blip the next few days will give us obviously a better idea of what's going on uh, coming on to seismograph data i like to use anhydros generally because that is at the center of the earthquake swarm that earthquake swarm that we are seeing in the uh, southern aegean so what I've put here is two seismographs. This is from the 17th and this is from the 19th. Uh, fortunately, they're not on the same size, but hopefully you can get the idea. On the 17th, you can see that these lines were quite rough, generally more or less all of the time and lots of small earthquakes happening. But generally, the line roughness was noticeable. There was always something happening well not always but you I hope you get what I mean and then if we look at the data from the 19th this is so far today we can see that these lines are much straighter much smoother um, much less roughness and generally we're not getting these small quakes that we were seeing on the 17th get a couple of small ones here but generally it looks cleaner I think in my opinion so that's the seismograph data intensity wise let's look at activity location yesterday we were seeing movement of the earthquake epicenters to the east of anhydros so it was happening in this area yesterday whereas today we are looking at the um, the purple well pink red and orange is for the last 24 hours and we can see more data coming from this area the uh, the pinks the purples and the reds are now down here Santorini is here, so we're seeing a movement from here to here. Basically, the movement is today, at least so far, it's between Santorini and uh, Anidros Island. It's funny, I don't know if it's funny, but we're getting quite big changes in the epicenters location. So uh, on the 17th, the epicenters were happening here. They've moved over here and then they moved over here. It's not, doesn't seem to be like a gradual change it's quite a noticeable change where the epicenters are happening on a day-to-day -day basis there is some talk with regards to this epicenter direction here we can, maybe we can say that there's a, a trend line here linking Santorini to Anidros, Anidros Island there is some talk there's a link in the article this takes you to um, a video where the lady talks about 
a theory that's been put forward. Uh, you'll have to check the links in the video description to see where she's getting it from. But apparently there is a theory of a very narrow dike between Santorini and this epicenter area. Apparently this dike could be as little as one kilometer wide and 30 kilometers long. And there could be uh, magma inside it. Uh, if this is correct, if that theory of there being a, a dike, 30 kilometer long dike here, if that is correct, the line of epicenters we've seen in the past 24 hours might might indicate magma movement or the movement of pressure in this hypothetical dike. Like I said, these are the most recent one, the red and the purples. They are leading towards Santorini. Apparently, it could be a dike. So this area, this line of earthquakes could indicate that, that there may be something to that um, theory of there being a magma dike link in the epicenter area with Santorini. So the seismic data, in summary, the cumulative data that we've seen the energy released coming down it does match what we are seeing from the anhydros uh, seismic stations i.e seismic data uh, reducing and the frequency of the seismic activity in general is also down again looking at the anhydros uh, seismic data not so much happening with the lines the lines are smoother so that's the seismic data let's look move on to island movement i covered this in quite a lot of detail yesterday with measurements and what have you so if you want to see that i'll put a link to yesterday's video uh, in the video description today's update i'm just going to say what we are see what we've seen in the last 24 hours with regards to island movement so first of all eos it looks like EOS's northerly and westerly movements could be slowing down. So I'll just click on the link here. And we can see, so this is the model data for EOS. Again, if you want to see this page, the links are in that Strike Engine article. And we can see this is, this is the, the last data points over the last, I think, 30 days, maybe less, 50, maybe 20 days. Maybe the, the trend line was going like that up to the 40th day and perhaps we are seeing it flatten out over the last five days or so. So that's why I'm saying that the northerly movement is slowing down. This is our easterly data. Up, If it was going up, that would be easterly. It's coming down and we're trying to, starting to see a quite a nice curve here where it's starting to uh, level out. So that's why I'm saying the uh, westerly movement is slowing down and the movement for this island in general is westerly again if you want to see the a deeper analysis on the movement of the islands what's normal what's not that is in yesterday's video and article um, with regards to up movement yeah perhaps we're seeing a flattening out of the rate of increase in uplift but obviously we need more data to uh, confirm these trends but that is on the surface that's what it looks like is happening santorini so this looks quite spectacular here over the past uh, two or well, five years actually but if we look on the last month data again we're seeing a nice perhaps a nice curve where it's starting to level out here so that the northerly movement of santorini could be slowing down it's usually moving south santorini so this is a, a return to the norm if it is slowing down easterly movement it was it looked like it was increasing the rate of uh, easterly movement but perhaps we're starting to see a slowing in this uh, easterly movement so that would be um, a good thing probably and with regards to the downward movement at the start of this swarm it uplifted quite a lot but we're starting to see it sort of accelerate down so i'm not sure if this is coming back down to the norm maybe this will tell us the norm is sort of what can we say here sort of 10 millimeters if we come back to the month and perhaps we're even going lower than the norm at the moment again this looks like a, a curve downward like an exponential increase in downward movement so this is interesting so that's the santorini movement could things could be slowing down there but downward movement could be accelerating and the last one a morgos island we can see the trends here but let's look at the monthly data the last data points that have been taken and perhaps we're seeing it level out 
the uh, southerly movement of the island perhaps it's slowing slightly maybe and it's a westerly movement that looks quite consistent to be fair and with regards to vertical movement we have got perhaps an increase here we've got this I think this is the latest one that they have which is quite a big difference to the rest but generally I think this graph is quite noisy for a height so again we need more data points to confirm any changes in trend there but we could potentially be looking at uh, accelerating uplift in Amorgos and the um, the trend for well I don't know how how over, I don't know how uh, many days are contributing to this trend line but it is showing an uptick and like I said the monthly data is not really showing anything to uh, contradict that we are still seeing uplift in Amorgos Island so summary again really the evidence the appears to be shown as the activity is dying down due to the uh, less earthquake activity and the intensity and the slowing movement of the island so generally things are quiet and down it looks like one mystery I touched on it just now one mystery we are seeing is the dropping of the seismic stations in Santorini and this seems to be a consistent downward trend which might even be accelerating if this downward movement has a seismic cause where are the earthquakes to go with it we have got some quite sensitive uh, data going on I mean we are measuring down to sort of 1.2 0.7 earthquakes one earth one Richter 1.1 I mean there is a capability to measure quite you know earth earthquakes that would register that you wouldn't feel but yet we're not really seeing any in the Sandorini area so what I'm I guess the point I'm getting at here is we're seeing accelerating downward movement which is not insignificant but we're not seeing earthquakes to go with it so I think that's quite interesting where are the earthquakes and if the downward movement is due to magma perhaps magma movement would be less likely to trigger earthquakes if the downward movement is due to magma or magma pressure moving elsewhere could this be traveling northeast and causing the quakes we are seeing in the hypothetical dike that, I that we touched on above moving towards Anidros I said I guess it's possible and it would be consistent with this magma dike theory if the pressure was getting transferred from Santorini and then moving in this direction but perhaps we would expect to see more earthquakes in this area perhaps maybe anyway that dike is a uh, hypothetical it may or may not be there but nevertheless we are seeing downward we are seeing drops in the Santorini which appear to be accelerating so big picture summary of the Santorini earthquake uh, at the moment data is pointing to a calming down of activity in general be it from earthquake intensity point of view and from an island movement point of view everything seems to be happening less often and with less intensity when it does happen and a quick addendum to the to this video the missing station the missing station something I highlight constantly in all of the updates is the station giving GNSS data from Anidros Island is there actually one there and if not why isn't there and if there is one there where is the data where can we see it because on the database for the GNSS stations it ain't listed if there is one there in my opinion uh, GNS data from Anidros Island would give us a much clearer picture of what is happening in the area in the previous update i.e. yesterday's update I said that, that I believe what we're seeing is a highly localized event all these earthquakes are happening in the area between Santorini uh, Amorgos Island which is just up here and EOS it's all happening here the stations in the larger area are not showing any uh, movement changes really or earthquake activity above what you'd expect normally everything is happening in the, in this area here and Anidros is in the center data from Anidros Island would I believe it again in my opinion as a layman would give us so much more meaning to the other data that we were seeing it would let us link up the data from the surrounding station and potentially gives a much higher resolution picture of what is actually happening like is that for example is the data in Amorgos linked to 
Anidros? Is there any similarity? East-West movement data from Anidros could give us a better idea of the location of the potential fault, which I covered again in yesterday's article, the potential fault between the earthquake area and Eos Island. If Anidros Island is moving west at the same speed as Eos, which is here, then perhaps we could say the fault is to the east of Anidros Island. But again, we don't have this data. We, 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 can't, we can't sew together all the data that we're getting from the bigger area. And this is like the connector for everything. This would give us, a, a, in my, again, in my opinion, a much better idea of what was going on. We would be getting a much richer picture of the earthquake area with data from Anidros. It's a shame that this station data is missing. Please, if you've got time, hit that like button. If you want to see more updates from Santorini, hit the subscribe button. Look after yourself and I'll see you again in the next video.